and good morning good morning. afternoon good evening nice to see you it's the john lavenia success mastermind do, do you you know how much of a kick i get out of saying that every week it's fantastic you know that we get to participate in this fabulous venture with our good friend our fearless leader the godzilla himself mr john lavenia it is wednesday the 8th of December. Okay, I can't handle this anymore. I can't handle this, like, time keeps going so bloody quickly. It's ridiculous. Isn't this ridiculous, Daisy? I mean, wasn't it Wasn't it just Thanksgiving, right? A couple days after the 4th of July? What the heck is going on here? <laughs> this is <just> nuts. <laughs> anyway, I'm Glenn Henderson. I'm your guy. And it is nice to be with you on this Wednesday morning evening, afternoon, night, wherever you may be watching. It is time to, uh, just to run quickly over the a little bit of housekeeping, if you please. What's on the schedule for, for, for us here in the Mastermind? Well, you're in the general session, hospitality suite right after this, and a, a lighter schedule today, this afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. UK time. It is Books for Britain with Mandy Anderson. I believe they're wrapping up Atomic Habits. I think that's the book that they're wrapping up this week. And uh, I myself will be back for Networking Magic next Wednesday, the 15th of December. And so it is glad to see you, Missy. Yeah, uh, I have a. I, I was actually having a thought about you uh, in regards to today's topic, uh, Missy and Giovanna Driussi. Am I getting that right, Giovanna Driussi? Nice. And Daisy is here. Daisy, the sharpest shot in the West. Don't mess <laughs> with Daisy, and. I am so thrilled. We are so thrilled to have the Godzilla himself with us. Revelin Avenia, how are you doing today? Good to see you, my friend. Excellent. So um, I was having a conversation with somebody, and this is uh, the part that may interest you, Missy, um, and all of us. Having a conversation with a friend of mine uh, the other day, someone that I'd been uh, working with, well, that's probably generous to say that I've been working with this person, maybe chatting having a conversation and you know it's nice here in the office uh complex is sort of an office sharing thing uh it's called the canon here in houston i walked in today and this is completely a complete tangent you all you all already understand how my brain works right i'm now off on a tangent i'm meeting friends business networking colleagues here it's great it's really one of the things i really love about working in this place is the buzz there's always activity, there's always action, always new people to meet, new conversations to start. But anyway, that's another topic which we'll get to on another Wednesday. Uh, this person that I've been chatting with for now the better part of two years, this was someone who uh, came, uh, approached me because she had been struggling with that whole thing of feeling stuck, as people say. Well, I'm, I'm trying this and I'm working on that then it doesn't really seem to be quite working out the way, I, maybe not getting the, the stats, the results that I've been seeking. What am I doing wrong? What's wrong with me? And, you know, that was, I think, was the sort of the tenor of our first conversation. And um, I all I did was ask some questions of her, try to get a sense of, of where she was and is mentally and emotionally and so forth. And who knows, maybe I can help and we'll see. Um, over time, I, 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 we found that I was able to share a couple of insights that were helpful or that were of some value to her. Uh, one of the main things that, that she and I have talked about, and I've talked about this with other people too, and we just had this conversation again yesterday. We have a kind of a standing check-in call once or twice a week. Uh, and I was put in mind, a comment that she'd made in the flow of the conversation, I was put in mind of one of the most well-known sayings of a favorite motivational speaker of mine, a gentleman by the name of Les Brown. We know Les Brown, you hear that name? Les Brown, you got to be hungry! That's Les Brown, uh, which is true. 
Um, it also helps to like get to work. <laughs> and so there's that. The other saying that's, that's attributed to Les Brown, and it is actually my favorite saying of his, is this. The game's not over until I win. And that was the topic uh, of my conversation yesterday with this, this colleague of mine who's been dealing for several years with some pretty serious, uh, shall we say, personal family issues, which you know I won't reveal confidences, but it's a, it's a situation where the one thing that is going to bring resolution, victory, satisfaction, you might say, is going to be, it's obviously going to be persistence, patience, a refusal to give up on my cause, which, it, hypothetically speaking, my cause, which I know is right. So you see, so that I cannot and I will not give up, I will not quit until I achieve that goal which I've set for myself, for my family, for our future, whatever it may be. <clears throat> and then the question comes up, well, you know, Glenn, I mean, that's, isn't, that, isn't that rather selfish? Isn't that, well, what do you mean, my goal? I won't give up on my goal. I won't sacrifice. Well, what about other people's needs? Well, what about other people's goals? What about the other things that other people want to accomplish? Well, uh, Zig Ziglar, you can have anything in this world you want if you will first help enough other people get what they want. As a matter of fact, it occurs to me that this conversation I'm having with my, with my friend may at some point involve uh, seeking a way, her seeking a way to help some of the other parties in this situation to get something that they want. Anyway, always look for that, by the way. Always look for how you can help another person win. First, before you start thinking about your own victory. Um, so I will not give up until I achieve the goals that I've set. And listen, we are all here intelligent, educated, I would say right thinking kind of people. And I mean right thinking, not in the sense of a political leaning, but I mean thinking we all tend to set our goals in terms of what is most pleasing, what is most beneficial for the greatest number of people, beginning with ourselves and our loved ones, and then bringing value and bringing benefit to those with whom we come in contact. If we didn't think that way, we wouldn't be in the mastermind. I've known of a couple of people who may have thought about joining, but, uh, you know, it's kind of like, um, what was it, uh, um, Droucher Marx. I would never be, uh, never want to join a club that would have me as a member. <laughs> so, it, sooner or later, character distinguishes people. So we are all of honorable, more or less honorable character here in the mastermind. So we know that the goals that we seek are those that are most pleasing, most beneficial to the greatest number of people. And in that sense, we should not, indeed we must not give up on what it is that we're trying to come, the business that you're seeking to build, the e-commerce network that you're seeking to grow, the, the network of other business professionals that you work with, the brick and mortar venture that you launched. I think I've mentioned that a couple of buddies of mine uh, and I have launched a, an actual brick and mortar business. Can you believe it? Yes. Just like leased a warehouse and we're now buying in it. Do you know what I just did? Kid from Brooklyn. Do you know what I just did? I just signed a financing deal for a forklift. What the hell do I need with a forklift? It's actually to haul steel and equipment and other things. We are launching a business wherein we are building and selling commercial co and competition grade barbecue smoker pits. You believe it? And, and, and you need a building. You need a warehouse for this, some place to build them and some place, a showroom and all that stuff. So we're 
We're all working on something. I think that's the thing we can agree on. We're working on something, and because we are here in the mastermind, and because we are of 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 a sufficient level of character and integrity. Shameless plug by John's book. Integrity is everything. <laughs> integrity. We know that our goals are are worthy. Right. Thank you very much for the for the comp for the comment. Uh, you know, we're looking for the greatest success. Hey, a pit in every backyard. That's us. Yeah. Look for HDM smokers. Matter of fact, I might have some business cards here. These are very cool. We just got these cards done. Check this out. How cool is that? It kind of looks like a smoker, doesn't it? Is it like the, the firebox over here and then the main thing and the smokestack? And, the, and, and, and as, you, as you can see, it's kind of shimmery, right? Not bad. <laughs> anyway, well, John, you, you, look, every, you know you're talking to the original New York metrosexual girly man, right? I like shiny stuff. Well, not all the shiny stuff. Some shiny stuff I like. Certain. <laughs> as long as it's like black. Black is the new black. Anyway, we're all seeking something. We're all seeking something, a cause larger than ourselves. Even if it involves just building our own family, building our own wealth and our own future. So, with all of that said, if our goal is honor, if our, if our purpose, if our purpose is honorable and with integrity, and our goal is worthy, it would be a failure for us to quit. It would be almost, can we say almost immoral for us to quit? I heard somebody say one time, your lack of dedication is a, as an insult to the faith of those who believe in you. Ooh. That's pretty serious stuff, don't you think? It, it, um, uh, Ray Higdon, buddy of mine, likes to say, when you realize that money is simply the result of helping people, making a difference, and solving market problems, then you come to the conclusion that it is actually selfish for you to not be super wealthy, become super wealthy. I had to think about that for a minute because, see, my background, as you all know, I was raised in a very, very religious, very Christian home uh, where self-sacrifice was the highest good, where altru denying oneself and taking up one's cross, you see, was considered the highest good. Uh, it is better to think of others than of one. You see what I'm, where, my, so it was difficult. It's always been difficult for me to look out for number one, if you like, to do things that ultimately benefit myself directly, right? In terms of more money, more success, more exposure, whatever it might be. It was really weird for me to begin to receive the accolades that started coming around the TV show and the media stuff that, that we're doing now. Because, well, like, who, who am I to be a star? Well, given the legacy with which I was born, given the legacy, I mean, I'm speaking of myself at the moment, given the legacy with which I was born, who am I not to be a star? How is anybody else better, any better or worse than I am as a person, right? So, we each of us have within us that deservingness. Is that a word? Yeah. Can, can we, we want to look that one up, John? I got to go grab my dictionary. Deservingness. We each of us, deservingness. Worthy. Worthy. Worthiness. 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 Right? Nice. Right. Each of us has the worthiness. Thank you. Greatest self development book in the world, right? The dictionary. <laughs> um, we each of us are worthy. I was at uh, a massage therapist uh, for a session yesterday, day before yesterday, and she has in her, in her studio where, you know, you go in to get the treatment, um, that, very simple, you are worthy. 
Simple. Who doesn't need to hear that? And it was interesting. The, whenever I go in for a session, we always have chat, chat and have some laughs in the session as well. Um, and we were talking about this whole thing of worthiness, of deserving and, and all of that. And I was telling her about the TV show and it still seems sort of surreal to me. Uh, uh, you know, like, who am I? Do, do I deserve this? And she said, well, think of it this way. She says, you earned this. Okay. That I can dig. I've worked really hard for a really long time at being a good musician, the best musician I could be, the best singer I could be, the best entertainer I could be. And I learned, I taught myself to be comfortable in front of an audience, to be comfortable in front of the crowd, which at the moment is now translating into being comfortable in front of a camera. You know, bright lights, cameras, and everything else. And so, yeah, I have earned this. Okay, high five me. Which, you know, doesn't make me the king of the world. It just means that the success that is now coming my way is, thank God, well earned. You have goals. You have things that you wish to accomplish. As John loves to ask us, the, the question, am I worthy of these goals? is the wrong question to ask. It's the incorrect question to ask. The question to ask is, are my goals worthy of me? Are my goals worthy of my best self? Are they worthy of my greatest potential? And see, that is the question that I've been rephrasing the past several years. Are my goals worthy of my highest self? coming to the realization now that my highest self is somewhere way the heck far above where I had originally thought or been raised to believe. Does that make sense? You with me? And so the, the, what I would offer to each of us today, bringing all of this back to the game's not over till I win, you, inherently you know that the things that you've set out for yourself, the goals, the income numbers, the organization size, the scope, the reach of your in social media, these things are, are they worthy of your best effort? I, I would say most of us probably need to upgrade our dreams, myself included. I mean, why couldn't I end up, why shouldn't I end up with, oh, gee, I don't know, some sort of nationally syndicated TV show? I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. I certainly, it, I certainly deserve, <laughs> I've certainly earned the right to go for that. Let's put it that way. I've earned the right to go for that. Or whatever other goal seems best to me. And in your case... I'm speaking to you, Missy. The challenge, the obstacle that we have in front of us at the moment cannot end, must not end in failure, in defeat. My, um, my favorite baseball team, the New York Mets, just signed one of the greatest pitcher, you know about this, Missy, signed one of the greatest pitchers in baseball. Matter of fact, one of the greatest pitchers in baseball history, Max Scherzer. And I just, I, it's an insane how much money they paid him, but listen, I'm not going to count the Mets owner's money. I ain't got time. It's not my money anyway. The point is, read an article about Max Scherzer today. One of the main thing that makes him an absolute monster, one of the greatest pitchers in the world, one of the greatest pitches of all time. The thing that makes him that is not the fact that he never loses, not the idea that he never loses. Of course he loses. Everybody loses from time to time. Everybody gives up a home run. You say, talking, our conversation we had last week about jujitsu. everybody gets submitted from time to time. Everybody loses from time. Here's what makes Max Scherzer great. It's not that he refuses to lose. It's that he refuses to accept defeat. Ooh. And that's in here. 
That's in here and in here. Yes, I may lose. I may fail. I may be told no. I may be turned aside temporarily from my course, but I refuse to accept defeat. Like, I've got big goals, and they're going to take time. Time? What the hell is time? I'm only 60. i got plenty of time. <laughs> and I walk around now. I'm walking around. And may I offer that perhaps all of us should consider walking around with the mental attitude, I refuse to accept defeat. I don't care how many times I fail. I don't care how many times I go bust and have to start over again. I don't care. Because the game of life, the game of success, the game of wealth, however I define, however you define wealth, the game isn't over until I win. Did you hear what I said? The game's not over until I win. So persevere. I don't want to hear nothing about you giving up. <laughs> if you like. Um, so that was the, the, the thought that has been running around in my head the past few days. You know, Max Scherzer, my, my friend Robin, um, Babe Ruth, who said that? Was that you, Missy? Yes. Babe Ruth, you know, record for home runs, also held the record for strikeouts. So he failed far more than he did. You know that the Baseball Hall of Fame has within its membership players who, as batters, failed 70% of the time. Did you catch that? They failed Mike Piazza, one of my favorite players of all time. Made the Hall of Fame primarily as a member of the New York Mets. Yeah, this is the theme, Mets. Yeah, let's go Mets. Anyway, Mike Piazza failed as a hitter nearly 70% of the time. As a matter of fact, 69.4% of the time he failed. Lifetime batting average of 306. Mike Piazza is in the Hall of Fame. And his name will live in eternity, in perpetuity, among the baseball, among the titans of baseball. Because he failed 69.4% of the time. What? Yeah. Because he refused to accept defeat. The games, write this down. Put it on a post-it note. Grab a post-it note. Write it down. Stick it up on your refrigerator. Stick it up on your bathroom mirror so you can see when you're shaving the guy in the morning, when you're putting makeup on the gal in the morning. The game's not over until I win. I love that. I mean, it just ugh, gets me charged up getting up in the morning, which by the way, I'll have you know that between the, the smoker business and the Brazilian jiu-jitsu and all the other stuff that's going on, do you, do you know I'm now waking up at 5.30 in the freaking morning almost every day? This is, this is ridiculous. Missy, Missy you, you should understand this. I'm a New Yorker, freaking night owl. I'm like the original New York night owl also. Normally, if I'm up at 5 in the morning, it's not because I'm getting up, it's because I've been up. But now, it's because I'm getting up at 5.30. And you know the really sick part of this? The really sick part? I'm actually starting to get used to this. My New York blood is finally beginning to thin, perhaps. <laughs> anyway, the game's not over until I... What, what do you think? The game's not over until I win. That's the theme for today. I would love to hear your thoughts your ideas. I see some smoke coming out of some ears because there's some ideas that have been raised. Well, naturally, Professor Lavenia, what's hey. happening, my friend? Wow. I, I love that. It's not, the game's not over until I win. You know, I haven't thought that way much of my life. You know, it's, and, and, and to, to uh, couple that with the idea of, of failing most of the time and becoming a superstar, this was, uh, this was something that was foreign to me as as a person as a let's say as a youth who who always had to strive to be the best or get it perfect or just to a neurotic degree uh and, and then you know of course getting into 
into the field of, you know, sales and marketing, well, you know, marketing is, uh, is one of those things where, you know, you get to optimize that what you're doing and you don't know if it's going to be right until you do it. So, so that's kind of maddening, you know, for a person who always wants to be right. Everything's a test, right? Everything's a test. Right. All marketing yeah. is a test. Right. And so, and so, um, and so how do I get to be right? How do I get to not make mistakes? How do I get to, you know, as if I got one shot at this, like Babe Ruth or whoever, the other guy you mentioned, who's famous or whatever. Mike um, Piazza. Yes. Mike Piazza. There you go. And uh, you can see, I, I'm not up on my uh, Mets history here, but, um, but you've got, you've got uh, many at bats unless you just suck so bad that, that you're fired. I, I suppose, I guess that, that would be the other thing, but, but what would that be? What would, and what's the, what's the, um, the threshold between, you know, is it, is it uh 20% versus 30% success rate? Is that like the main, is that the main difference between the worst and the best, or is it even lower? Is it 10% success rate? I mean, if 30% success rate is like amazing, well, you know, then, then where, where do you draw the line? I suppose. I, again, this is just as someone who who has a, a, attempted to to do things right and to and to be right. I mean, look, people will die to be right. They fight holy wars and everything else, right? So kill each other, right? To be right. Um, so <laughs> so um, anyway, I'm thinking of all this and I'm keeping it light. But my have uh, my my habitual way of thinking is to persist. And so I guess uh, in a way, yeah, the game's not over until I win. Yes, that, that is something that I have demonstrated without using those same words. Um, in my mind, it's just do whatever it takes for as long as it takes, uh, which doesn't sound as fun. So I like, your, I like your method. The game isn't over until I win. It's the same, it's the same actions, we, we could say, or the same intent, but it sounds more flippant to me. I like it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. More flippant. Yes, exactly. We're right. keeping we're keeping things light. We're right. keeping things, and yeah, I'm 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 really excited about the prospects for the the barbecue smoker business. The um as in terms of like we win. Uh, look, who knows? The market could turn. Some unfortunate decision that would make that would break. I mean, we could go belly up. Who knows? My point. My, my idea is, okay, if we go belly up, okay, then we start over, do it again. A good pilot is compelled to evaluate what happened so he can apply what he's learned. Uh, it's all movie lines, right? That one's from Top Gun. Um, but yeah, we, we're, we're off to a pretty good start. Uh, we haven't even built the first smoker yet. We've already got 10 people saying, shut up and take my money. Yes, I want one. Okay. Let, let me jump in on that again. Go ahead, I, I don't think most people understand what we're talking about here because we got people mm. all around the world mm. who, who tune into this. Yeah. So when, when Glenn is talking about a barbecue smoking pit thing, okay, uh, yes. he's not talking about what you go to the local hardware store, Home Depot, $500, Right. Glenn, if you could give me the price point on a mid range competition grade smoker. Yeah. Our entry level backyard smoking pit, barbecue smoker pit, is a 24 inch wide pipe, the main smoking area. So, this is a big thing. And so, our entry level backyard smoker is going to run between $3,500 and $4,000. And what, then, but I want to do it for real. I don't want the hors d'oeuvre, right? What's oh, the, okay. So you, so you, so you want to go legit, right? Okay. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna like put this thing on a trailer and go to the local cook-off, and I'm gonna win some money. Oh, well, in that case, hell yeah. Um, our, we're we're gonna do three larger format models: 250 gallon, thousand, uh, 500 gallon, and a thousand gallon. Our thousand gallon smoker pit will be built. It'll weigh between four and five thousand pounds. Uh, it'll be built either on skids, like for a permanent restaurant setup, or on a trailer for our friend John, who's now going to go win some competition money. That smoker, right now, we're, you know, since we're launching, we're offering it at, at a somewhat discounted, at, at the somewhat discounted price of $20,000. $20,000. Uh huh. To, to cook weenies and, and hamburgers. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> and so, and briskets and racks of right, spirits. Right. No, yeah. I, I get it. I, but and, and I'm talking to you as a layman. I don't know the ways of barbecue <laughs> cookery. Okay, mm. I um, you know I've got I've got the like the cheapest barbecue you can get. It's got a propane tank. I don't give a shit, right? I mean, I, I cook. Uh, it, it, it comes. I, the food is cooked, but I'm done. I eat it. I, I survive, and, right? But but for the people who who like they're in that world. Oh 20 yeah. Twenty grand, of course. Twenty grand. That's the oh, that's a good deal. I right. was just at a at a, at a barbecue uh, cookoff, judging at a barbecue cookoff competition this past weekend, chatting with a guy, telling him about you know we're launching the things that we're doing. He says thousand gallons of milk. How much you charging? Twenty thousand? Yeah, man, I got to get me one of those. Right. Here's my car. Here's my car. Get in touch. Get in you touch. Got orders, you got orders backing up. Here's why we I got orders. Yes. Up. And here's why I wanted you to, to reveal that publicly is because there are people who are are thinking, oh, man, I got a twenty dollar item here. Will <laughs> anybody buy my twenty dollar item? Okay. So add a couple of zeros to that. Here's my twenty thousand dollar thing, and here's people in line to buy it. Yeah. Yes. So just perspective. Right. There's a reason. That's an excellent point you make, John, and I'm, I'm so actually really glad you brought that up. Um, one of our guys, one of our partners in the group, who, in the company, who is actually a master steel fabricator, welder. I mean, the guy is a he's he's a freaking mad scientist when it comes to steel and how to manipulate it. Um, <clears throat> he was talking with somebody <clears throat> recently. He was sharing them what we're doing. And the guy said, well, man, you know. You guys got a lot of competition. You know, what are you going to do about the, the big green egg, you know, sellers and the vendors and the and the Traeger pellet smokers? You know, somebody can go in, down to the local uh, Home Depot and, and they can get a great smoker for 600 bucks. I mean, how are you going to compete with those guys? I love Paul. He's such a wonderful guy. You know what he said? He said, we're not. We, we don't. We're not competing with those guys. We don't want that business. We want... We want the people who understand why Bentleys cost more than Chevrolets. This is the business we want. And as John so perfectly timed in his comments said, we're selling smokers at a price point where some people might actually have to take out a second mortgage on their house to buy one. And yet, we got people, literally, shut up and take my money. Here's my credit card. How much you want up front? You guys start making those thousand dollar smokers? I want the first one. No, 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 I want the first. No, I want the first one. We, far too often, undervalue that which we have to offer. This is a big reason I've heard it. This is not original with me, so I won't claim the genius on this. I won't claim the, the prophetic wisdom on this. This is a big reason why there has been a stigma around businesses in the direct selling space, network marketing, what uh, MLM, multi-level market, what used to be called multi-level market. One of the big reasons that there's a stigma that that many people don't consider it a legitimate business is the fact that you can sign up for 50 bucks or 100 bucks or a couple hundred bucks, thousand dollars or 500, whatever it is. Oh man, that ain't no real business. If you want a real business, you got to invest a hundred thousand. You got to, right? Well, and, and it's a big reason why many people who get into that business ostensibly saying that they want to make money, that they want to achieve wealth and prosperity and success, don't take it seriously because it only costs a couple of hundred bucks to get started. And if it doesn't work out, eh, it's only a couple hundred bucks. What if every networking, network marketing business, regardless of the product, regardless of the service, what if every network marketing business costs $25,000 to start your business? Would you take it seriously then? Uh, I bet a heck of a lot more seriously than those who only put up, a, you know, 150 or 299 or whatever it is. Why? Because there's re there's real money on the line now. And what we are learning with this with the HDM smokers with the new business is that there are people who understand the real value of things. Uh, I lived in the Middle East for 10 years, and in in this one particular country, uh, about 
it was said about the citizens of that country, many of them, you know, they've got all the oil money and the gas money driving around in Bentleys and blah, 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 and crash one on the side of the road, call their brother-in-law, bring him another one, you know, that kind of thing. It is said of some, many of those people that they understand the price of everything and the value of nothing. What I'm learning is that there are people who understand the value of a good smoker, a good smoke, a good consistent temperature, a 500 a, 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 a firebox, as we say, where you put your wood chips, your wood chunks, a firebox that will hold heat overnight because that thing is fully insulated and it weighs 500 pounds. Just a firebox. So think about what it is you do. This is a good second topic, John. Thank you. Think about what it is you do and what your offer is to the world. The real value of it, not the price, not the price of it. Somebody can enroll with me in my e-commerce uh, online shopping business. Somebody can enroll with me as a customer for 50 bucks, 100, a couple hundred bucks. The value. What's your health worth? What's a good cholesterol level worth to you? What's your immune system worth to you? In this day and age, you know what I'm saying. What's good health? What's a clear mind worth to you? What's you, what is your children's health worth to you? Getting the junk out of your house. You see what I'm saying? That's just one example. Take a few minutes and think deeply about what it is you do, what it is you offer, and not just what you're charging for it, but the value that you are providing in the marketplace, the value that your customer gets because of what it is you offer. I bet you'll take your business a bit more seriously. I'm not saying anything about where you are now. I'm saying even more value will come to you as you think of your your product, your offer, your service, your offer, your opportunity, that way. It's worth so much more than even you have thought of. I, I'm, I'm thinking, sell one of these thousand gallon smokers? Yeah, dude pays 20,000 for it. Suppose he wins three, four competitions, gets a couple hundred grand in his pocket and ends up with a TV show on the Food Network. What was that smoker worth to him? A hell of a lot more than he paid, I'll guarantee you that. So, great topic. What is your offer? We may have to like, we may have to find some sort of abbreviated title for this episode, John. <laughs> the game's not over until I win. That's the main thing I wanted to communicate to share with us today. The game is not over until I win. And what's your offer really worth? Ooh. Deep stuff to think about. Any other? Thoughts. Nice to see you, Emma, Edwards, Sandy, Lewis. Thanks for jumping in with us. It's great. And I know we have viewers, as you said, John, all around this beautiful little green ball we live on. Great to see all of us. And we'll be seeing some in the hospitality suite right after this. I, I'll tell you, I've had some really interesting conversations over in the his hospitality suite. Very cool stuff gets topics get thrown out onto the floor for consideration by the committee and then this app yep john i got i got one other bit of perspective just to offer out while we're on whatever this topic is and please send me a title <laughs> go for it um does anybody know who john bowers is from worthing england how about roy wilkins these names mean anything to you yeah, the, the names ring a bell to me and right. i'll kick myself as soon as you uh okay because I didn't know the, the name of the Mets guy. And oh, I don't Bowers know anything, Milken. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know the name of, of I, or like, I don't know anything about smokers and $20,000 <laughs> barbecue setups or anything like that. Okay. Um, but I do know who John Bowers and Roy Wilkins were. Now, as you mentioned it, yep. Right. So if you guys don't know, well, here's a little demo. Right here's uh, 1966. They opened this little shop in Worthing, England. Mm -hmm. Bowers and Wilkins. This is, these are the speakers I run. 
Okay, so so like I I may not give a damn about the Mets or 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 barbecues, but spend fifty grand on a stereo, sign me up, baby, sign me up. Look at this. Here's the history of the company. So what happened here? Passion, passion happened here. Let me get to some stuff you might recognize. There you go. Oh hell yeah. I run eight hundred twos, not eight hundred ones. But yeah, I mean this is now you know B and W Bowers and Wilkins speakers. They're among the best in the world. Yep. And and you could spend more. They're not the most expensive. I mean, their most expensive enclosure is about fifty thousand, you know, per unit. Um, you could spend more. There's a uh, Focal JM Labs in France doing the uh, Grand Utopia Beryliums for a hundred thousand per enclosure. I I don't think I can hear that good. I mean, <laughs> but but you know, it's all that it's all that gun range time. You yeah. Know? yeah. But uh, and, and heavy metal. But the mm -hmm. um, but the thing is that somebody values that. 50 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand for, for a stereo system? Yep. Hell yeah. So again, just a little bit of perspective here. So it may or may not be for you, but it is for somebody. It was for John Bowers, mm -hmm. right? He started that company John with- And it's for John Yeah, well, he started that and, and he, mm -hmm. he knew I was coming, right? <laughs> yeah. He started that, that company before I was born, 1966, with 10,000 pounds that he got as an inheritance from a satisfied, happy customer who liked his- the speakers that they were hand making for him. Here's 10,000 pounds. You've changed my life with your hi-fi systems. And bam, Bowers and Wilkins was born. So wow. who knows where it's coming from? I'm telling you. And who knows where HDM smokers are going? <laughs> I'm All right, telling I'm gonna you what. Up. <laughs> yeah, shut up, John. I can't believe you. Anyway, um, it. thank you. Perspective. Perspective. You have no idea idea of the potential you already hold in your hands. You have no idea. And you can't control the results of that potential. You can't control, none of us can control the outcome of what we do. What we can control is our passion. The passion that we invest into that which we do. The passion that we, the effort that we sink into our day-to-day -day activities in service of the larger goal. So, the game's not over. The game's not over until I win. Thank you so much, my friends. We shall see you in the hospitality suite. See you this evening with our good friend, Mandy Anderson. Books for Britain, 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. UK. And then we shall see you again tomorrow morning in the Gen Sesh at noon Central. I'm sorry, noon Eastern. Yes, noon Eastern, 11 Central. I'm still working on time zones. You know, you don't have to be perfect to host one of these things. <laughs> Thank you all so much for spending a few minutes with us. Make it a fabulous day. Absolutely deserve it. See you soon. Bye for now.